Welcome back to E Roddick the brand. Hi, my name is Eden Lee Middleman. I'm your favorite dating and sex coach here. This episode is a part three because you guys have just been eating this shit up. You love my sex tips. A lot of you guys are subscribed specifically for sex tips. These are things to keep in mind that will elevate your sex game, will make you better in bed, and maybe have you branch out from what you're used to. Sex is extremely personal, so not all of these tips are going to make sense for you and your partner. In order to be the best person in bed, to leave a lasting impression, and to increase your confidence in the bedroom, you really need to figure out what you're into and what your partner's into and work together. And that's already going to branch out what you're used to or what you like by factoring in what somebody else might be into. Again, make sure it's completely consensual and obviously make sure you're comfortable with it. If you're not sure, you can try, but you should be with a partner that obviously will allow you to take a step back if it's not really something that you're into. As long as you're open, that already gives you the upper hand and will make you already better in bed if you have a bit of an open mind and are willing to explore. In order for you to be willing to explore, you have to be in an okay place with yourself sexually And that is where a lot of you guys have your roadblocks. That's a bigger topic of discussion, something that oftentimes I recommend sex therapy or, you know, relationship therapy, depending on how it affects your relationship or your sex life and where it might be stemming from. But we all have different relationships with sex and with ourselves while fucking. If you limit porn, if you choose healthier alternatives in exploring yourself like masturbating by using your imagination and exploring your body, you are going to discover a whole new world to you. We all, believe it or not, don't know all of ourselves, which is so exciting, but also overwhelming for a lot of people. Every year I find myself dabbling in something new or trying something new or reverting to things back in the day that you know I might have loved but forgot about or was bored of but now suddenly I'm reinvigorated in that department that I shelved for a while so you have a lot of avenues to explore how to increase your style in the bedroom how to increase your confidence how to increase the excitement and switch things up now it's not just about switching things up these are some tips and tricks that are super easy to implement today tonight tomorrow whenever so thank me later one of the first tips and i feel like i am a goddamn broken record and the reason why i will continue to bring it up is because a lot of you guys don't understand the power of this i brought this up in my masturbating with your partner video i brought this up with how to last longer in bed all of those kinds of topics, this is key. Go back and forth with oral sex. Honestly, I already know how you guys fuck. You know what I mean? Like I just, I know how you guys fuck and it's boring. You start off with oral sex and then you, you know, wean your way into sex and then you come and game over. This is why I say when you go back and forth with oral sex, you can actually increase the duration in bed because you're not like, you know, getting to the point where you're like, oh my God, I can't handle this and I'm going to come. So you take that break and you switch it up. That obviously gives your body time to recuperate and kind of like pause for a minute and then get back into it and work your, their way up again. So for guys, this is great for you if you don't feel like you last long in bed and for girls if you want to switch things up receive or give this is also really exciting to just randomly decide to do that you're still engaging in sex and it's not awkward because it's still sexual but it's just like a nice way of giving or receiving and creating a longer duration in the bedroom but also keeping things spicy and interesting it really does wonders tip number two mirrors if you and I find a lot of men are into this uh women are too like i i would love to see how i look fucking you know and sometimes you can record with somebody that you trust be careful with that though i don't like to endorse that because a lot of people are fucking sketchy disgusting ridiculous and that shit will get leaked better not to have any physical evidence of any of that shit especially if it's not somebody that you know 100 percent and trust but mirrors is the next best thing instead of recording yourself watching each other and like watching each other fuck and like fucking to that or masturbating together to that This is amazing. You get the visual aid that you normally wouldn't when you're just fucking. I for sure have brought this tip up. It's nothing new. It's not rocket science, but find a mirror or install a mirror in your bedroom. Honestly, now when I go into someone's home and they like give me a house tour and I go into the bedroom and I see a mirror, I'm like, okay, you little nasty. Okay, you little freak. We love to see it. And even if the mirror isn't able to be propped up next to the bed, you can always do positions that require you to stand up or get creative in front of a mirror. Either the man can be looking at your facial expression 
or can be seeing what you're doing or vice versa. You can see what they're doing and it's just really hot. It gives you angles that you normally won't be able to see with a POV view when you're getting fucked or you are fucking, you know what I mean? So a mirror can really change up the experience and make it more exciting and give you more visual stimulation, which women love, but I know specifically men love and that's probably because you guys watch way too much porn and you know you're used to like watching something and jacking off like a fucking whatever loser sorry I said what I said tip number three this is how you build tension build anticipation and also keep sex lingering in a way outside of the bedroom sexting is pretty obvious but build a game around sexting this might not be convenient for everyone's schedule but find a day that works for both of you obviously be fucking mindful start sexting now sexting can go from something as like can't wait to see you tonight to sending little naughty pictures videos whatever but you can build a game out of that i used to do this i thought this was really fun and it's a nice way of like reinvigorating things if you're long distance or if you're planning a date or a weekend with them or something like that, or if you just want to excite them throughout the day and have them thinking about you outside of the bedroom. Ask each other for little demands, you know, like go to the washroom and do this and send me a video or send me a picture right now of this or, you know, what are you wearing? The what are you wearing thing is just side note for those that are just like not with it. You know what I mean? That you don't want to fucking do to somebody that you just started talking to. The what are you wearing? Girls literally ooh, hurl when they see that text message. You ladies know what the fuck I'm talking about. It's like, shut up. Okay, I'm wearing granny panties, baby. Even if I'm not, I'm going to tell you that. Like, honestly, fuck off. It gives me like prepubescent vibes. You know what I mean? Like, what underwear are you wearing? You know, like it's just childish. But the way you can make it sexy is by building a game throughout it. Like, you know, be by your phone, babe. I have a little fun game for us to play. And one of you guys can initiate that. And it's just going to turn you guys on throughout the day and that makes it really sexy and then the nice part about this game that can elevate your game in the bedroom is you build this game around the things that you want to do with them or to them the next time you see them so for example you know bend over like this and send me a photo like that's how I'm going to be fucking you next time I see you. you know whatever and then the nice thing about that is they'll be thinking about it throughout the week or for however many hours and then you both do that that night this is such a fun sexy little thing and it really does make the sexual experience that follows after that just really special something really exciting because you've been like putting thought into it and playing this game throughout the fucking day it's hot trust me tip number four praise i don't care what kink what narrative you're into in the bedroom this is human psychology 101. Everyone wants to be praised. Everyone wants to have the other person that they care about or that they like notice, you know, things about them and notice that they're good at things. And this can help you guys increase your vocalization in the bedroom, which in and of itself, as you guys know, is hot, dirty talking. I made a whole video on that as well. And that is obviously a huge tip in the bedroom, even if it's minimal dirty talking, talking adds another layer of stimulation, auditory stimulation, right? Your ears are also getting fucked as you're getting fucked. And who doesn't love getting fucked in all areas? Okay. <laughs> Most of you guys don't praise your partner. Fuck, I love when you do that. Like that excites them and makes them want to do more of that. Positive reinforcement. Hello. We all know this trick. We all, I'm sure, utilize this in certain areas of our lives. Use it in the goddamn bedroom. Praise them. Don't be praising them the whole fucking time, obviously, because that can get annoying. But here and there, make it be known that you're loving it. Make it be known that you love the view. Make it be known that you love this part of their body. Make it be known that you, you know what I mean? Like the get creative, think of things, notice things. What turns you on? What do they do that turns you on? Or I love when you wear that blah, blah, blah. A little side note, sidebar moment here. Make sure it's what's going on. Don't bring up something from the past that they're not doing because then they're going to be like, oh, ew. Like, I don't know. At least for me, I'm kind of stubborn and I don't like when people tell me what to do. I want to be able to do it and then you appreciate that I'm doing it. So if I did something last time in the bedroom and I'm not doing it this time, perhaps I don't want to do it. How about that? Have you ever thought about that, Johnny boy? Perhaps I don't want to do it. Perhaps I'm just not in the mood today or whatever the case may be, or want to try something new. So if I'm doing something new, or if I'm, you know, doing something that you love, or if I stopped to, you know, give you a little oral moment, say that you enjoy that. Say, fuck, I love when you blah, 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 that I'm doing. 
okay, that they are doing present, be present in the moment. What are they doing that you can praise them on man and woman? Both of you guys can be doing this and it just elevates your sex game and makes everyone feel just really good about themselves. And when someone feels good about themselves, they become more confident. And when they become more confident, they become more adventurous. Number five, this is something that only the pros, I'm going to, I'm going to reach out and say pros here. It doesn't mean that you fuck more than others. It's just, you're really sexually in tune. Intimacy in romance mixed in with things that are a little bit less romantic in the bedroom. Can you provide both? What I mean by that is, let's say you're having a little rough moment. You're really just, you know, dogging it out. And all of a sudden you switch the tempo. And I've mentioned this, like switching tempo is important. Not only switching the tempo, switching the vibe. And not abrasively, but in the right way. And this might sound really elaborate and confusing and contradicting to a lot of people that are listening to this who have not actually experienced this. But I'll tell you, this is probably one of my favorite favorite sex tips and it's very hard to find a partner who gets this and is good at it so this might not again sit well or be for everyone but this is definitely a sex tip that I'm not going to gatekeep and then I know that you know if you know what I'm talking about you know what I'm saying you know how fucking good it is okay if you know you know there's a lot of you knows here for those that feel left out let me break it down to you let's say you guys are making out up against the wall okay it's really hot and heavy and it's kind of like really physical and a little bit more like aggressive in a good way safe way obviously but all of a sudden like he or she grabs you and slows it down and like gives you a deeper kiss rather than just like hot and heavy it like slows down the moment the romantic kind of intimate side of you gets stimulated suddenly and then you go back to that aggressiveness roughness and you're like holy fuck like I'm just all of my all of these areas are getting are getting touched all of these areas mentally emotionally and physically are just are getting stimulated and it's just so fucking powerful especially if you're in a relationship this is like the top tier of sex if you can go back and forth from like roughing it up and it just being sex to it being like there's more to it there's emotion in that it doesn't mean you have to be in love with the partner either for this to happen it's just you're craving each other's body you're loving each other's body you're appreciating the moment and as they're enjoying and savoring that like romantic slower sexier moment and then switch it up back into something a little bit more like sexy and they're gonna be like (gasps) you know like whoa and it's just it's just incredible like it's just I'm turning myself on it's just really fucking incredible if you know you know if you can describe it better than I can leave a comment on my YouTube video my channel um, breaking it down and and maybe sharing with the community how you do this and how you implement this because it is just perfect it's so hot it's really easy to do in foreplay actually because obviously there's usually a gradual climb to that but even in the bedroom while you're fucking you know like maybe it's just like getting really dirty and nasty and you're dirty talking and then all of a sudden you slow it down you tell them slow it down and they can't because they're so into the moment it's just hot it's kind of like a power moment control moment a little sub dom meeting and greeting there number six is kind of a general idea I want you guys to have in the back of your head it's not so much like a physical tangible tip that you can implement this is something that you're gonna have to figure out what works for you but orgasm is not the end goal of sex per se all the time okay it's great and obviously people think well what the fuck are we fucking for I mean, you're just like an immature little kid. And obviously you're not great in bed if you don't understand this concept. Sorry, in my opinion. Orgasming is great. I'm not saying not to. I mean, you should orgasm if you're going to, you know, have sex, of course. But don't have that be your end goal. The, the problem when people make orgasming, you know, or pleasuring their partner to the point of orgasming their end goal, there is a bit of that stress and rush throughout sex that I think we can all kind of understand. And it just makes sex less enjoyable. So this could be harming your sex game rather than, you know, increasing it, even though you might think, well, I'm trying to get them to come. Take your time, right? When you take your time, it almost seems like you're not stressed and you're more confident, right? Because if you're stressed to make them come, it's like, fuck, you're not really confident in yourself thinking that you're able to make them come. You don't think that you can make them come. That's why you're stressed. That's why you're trying to get it done. You know what I mean? Or you're a little boy who like finishes after two seconds, you know? So then we have to figure out how we can work with that. And that's why I brought up oral, you know, taking breaks in between or going for round two and taking your time for that. You know, everyone is different. Obviously, I'm not shaming you if you don't last long, but there are different ways that you can to 
improve your sex game and it benefit your partner too because everyone has different ideal durations of sex and if you are in a relationship it's definitely something that you should be talking about with your partner you know like a lot of girls I love my girls but you girls like pull out numbers from your fucking ass like you know 15 minutes 20 minutes an hour I would I would love to fuck for like two hours straight girl you don't know what two hours straight is you know what I mean like put a timer on and try and do that for two hours like straight you guys have to understand math and and time (laughs) you know orgasm is not the end goal if you go into thinking that then it's just going to be about the orgasm and it's not going to be anything special it's truly a mindset when it comes to sex I'm going to pleasure them I'm going to explore them I'm going to experiment with them I'm going to have fun with them I'm going to make them feel good and if they orgasm great I mean obviously you know, if, if you guys got to go and you know what works, then we'll do that when you got to go. Make it a fucking experience because the best sex anyone's ever had, they can say wholeheartedly it was more of the experience. OK, it wasn't like two seconds. I came and went. Tip number seven. And this is something I always like to keep in the back of my mind. I like to alternate between focusing on just penetration and then I love to always add in another erogenous zone and then taking it away and then reintroducing it and then taking it away so like while you're getting fucked you know like play with his balls while you're fucking her play with a part of her body that is an erogenous zone which is you know a, a part of your body that will sexually arouse the partner even more so and I've made two separate videos you know the erogenous zones for men and the erogenous zones for women just pick a part of the body that I mentioned in one of those episodes and implement it and play with it. Now, penetrating while stimulating an erogenous zone is obviously going to be next level, but you don't want it to be next level the whole time because then you're going to have to top that. So that's why I always say, guys, play with the levels. I'm going to increase it a little bit. I'm going to make it feel real good, but I'm going to bring it back down. It's, again, kind of the same theme as tempo and vibe. And that is the the key and the secret to sex being just like this. Oh, my God, I just want more and more and more. Oh, my God, like this is incredible. You know, it's building that experience of sort of this like unpredictability, excitement. But again, you don't have to do too much. Okay, you can just surprise them by doing the same body part that they like, finding a place that they really enjoy, doing it a little bit and then focusing on just penetration and going back to that. And that keeps them on their toes. If you're going to start playing with every part of the body and penetrating and stopping that and doing that and, you know, 17 million things at once, then sex gets overwhelming. Then it's like, whoa, 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 chill the fuck out. You know what I mean? That's why. Take your time. Explore. Be curious. Stay for a minute. Let go for a minute. Come back for a minute. You know what I mean? Like, But not like, okay, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing that, I'm stimulating every part of your body. You think more is more, it's not. Less is more, as we know. Tip number eight, kind of obvious, surprise, okay? Not every sexual experience needs to be full of surprises, needs to be full of different things, you know? Keep Keep it simple, you know, and just elevate things that work. That's usually the key to, like, confidence and things like that. But from time to time, throwing in a surprise is great. Whether it's the sexting game I told you guys about or... You know, you're having a fun dinner and all of a sudden you crawl under the table and pull down his pants, you know, but like make sure you obviously read the room and know that you guys are flirting and start that spark that or, you know, hint to something. Don't do anything about it and then do something about it later on. Catch them by surprise to a degree or tease them and keep that tease going longer than you normally would. These little surprises, again, create a really exciting sexual experience that makes you seem and look and be better in bed. That's the fucking truth. Especially if you're in a relationship where you live with your partner, it can get kind of like routine, right? The sex, when you guys fuck and how it starts and whatever. Switch up how it starts. That's what I'm going to leave you guys with. Find a different way, create a different scenario in your head and try and create that in real life. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. I would appreciate the support. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell if you want to be notified when I post so you don't miss an episode. And if you're listening to the podcast, thank you so much for listening to the very end. Give this podcast five large and in charge stars. It really helps me out so much and allows me to continue doing this and giving you guys more of the shit that you want to fucking hear. Thank you guys for watching or listening, and I will talk to you guys later. Have fun tonight. Bye.